Welcome to this video explaining the correlations cockpit of Visplor. The video will show you how you can detect correlating variables and how to analyze correlations with a particular target variable. We demonstrate this with the Solar Power demo dataset. If you haven't already done so, you can start the correlations cockpit by double click on the second icon in the sidebar called Choose Cockpit. The view at the top left shows an overview of correlating pairs of variables. Each cell corresponds to a pair of variables and displays a small scatter plot by default. Let's start by looking at temperatures and type temp into the filter line. Now, the top cell shows the outdoor temperatures of Happyville and Sunny City. The cell below plots Happyville against the indoor temperature of Sunny City, and so on. The background color indicates the degree and the sign of correlations. Red means positive correlations, and blue would mean negative correlations. This allows you to quickly identify pairs and even groups of correlating variables. In our case, the red cells indicate that all temperature sensors are more or less positively correlated. However, some of them show a stronger correlation than others. You can simply hover over cells to see the Pearson correlation coefficient, as well as the corresponding p-value. And if you click on a cell, the two variables are shown in much more detail in the scatter plot at the right-hand side, as well as in the time series view at the bottom. These two views also support to select data, as you may already know from other cockpits. For example, the scatter plot of the indoor and outdoor temperatures of Bright County reveals some outliers. We can analyze these outliers in more detail. The lasso selection is a helpful tool for that, so let's go for this selection mode. When you select data, the corresponding time periods are highlighted along the timeline and all correlations in the overview are recomputed for only the selected part of the data. This can be very helpful if your data has anomalies or multiple clusters, because it makes it simple to select homogeneous parts of the data for the correlation analysis. For example, we could select everything except the outliers to understand the correlation of the normal behavior. In many cases, you have a particular target variable and are interested which variables correlate with that target. For example, we could ask which weather sensors correlate most with the power generation of a particular region. For such questions, the Target Correlation tab provides a helpful tool. First, let's specify the target variable. The target variable can be found just above the color legend and can be changed there. In this case, the photovoltaic power generation of Bright County. For a start, let's summarize the correlation of each variable as one correlation value and let's remove the subdivision of the x-axis for now. Finally, let's remove the filter for the temperature variables and look at all weather sensors instead. This generates a tidy sorted list where we can simply click through the individual correlations. As you might have expected, the solar radiation of Bright County shows the highest correlation with the target. Also in this view, the correlations are updated when you select data in other views. For example, you can use the time series view to compute the correlations only for a certain period, such as October and November. In many cases, the correlation between variables is different for various parts of the data. For example, the season, the time of the day, or other characteristics may have an impact. Visplore allows you to break down correlations easily. First, let's clear our selection from before. Now, assume you need to assess if two senses correlate consistently over time. All you need to do is to subdivide the x-axis of the view called target correlation, as you might already know from other Visplore views. For example, let's break it down by month. This shows that some sensors in fact have a varying correlation for different months. 
Now, this may arouse suspicion if the correlation is real and not just occurred locally by chance. In the very same manner, you could compare correlations for other types of data categories. For example, for each process mode of industrial sensor data. Finally, let's have a look at another interesting example. Clear the selection, return to the first tab, and filter to time series containing the word power and not the word model, because we want to exclude model time series for now. The previews now show some interesting plots with two spikes, so click on one of them. In this case, we are looking at correlations between the time series imported power and imported apparent power of Cloudington. There are both strong positive as well as strong negative correlations. We can switch off the regression line in the trend overlay options as the relationship is not so simple. The drill down block offers many options to break down this complex correlation. So let's expand it and switch to the heat maps tab. As the time series shows a cyclic pattern, let's assign hour to the x-axis of the heat map and day of week to the y-axis. The different colors across hours from left to right confirm that the sign of the correlation actually depends a lot on the time of the day. However, the day of week does not make much difference, so let's replace it by month. And here we are. The correlation seems to be very different whether or not there is solar radiation. During daytime, which starts earlier in summer, the blue cells show a negative correlation. While during nighttime, the correlations seem to be strong and positive. With this example, we conclude this video about the correlations cockpit. You have seen how to identify correlating variables, find correlations to a specific target, and can break down complex correlations. We hope the video was helpful. Please also check out our other videos. Thanks for watching.